Kings fans, welcome to Utility Sports. In today's video, we have a Kings focused offseason preview where we're going to talk about what I think Sacramento needs to do to really improve this team and also some potential avenues that they have, whether that comes through the NBA draft, NBA free agency. We're also going to look back at this past season a little bit and more in today's video. So if you are a big time Kings fan, I do recommend subscribing to the channel because we will be covering the NBA draft with full intensity moving forward so i hope you guys are enjoying that content and also if you're looking forward for more kings content leave a like on today's video to let me know that first of all i have a lot of kings fans watching the channel and secondly it'll let me know that you guys are just overall enjoying the content so even if you're not a kings fan leave a like because i will just be covering a lot more nba offseason coverage moving forward including all 30 nba teams we're starting with the kings today and we have other ones up on the channel as well so make sure to go check them out after today's video let's go ahead and jump forward here into the video preview what are we actually going to be covering first we'll talk about the 2021 2022 season because that's really what matters right the off season is supposed to set you up for good seasons and um, we need to look at this past season to kind of have an understanding and an idea of where this team needs to go moving forward so in that we'll talk about the record that they finished with and also some of the bright spots that i saw watching the games then we'll go to key decisions to make for GM Monty McNair. And I think there's a few that are very essential for this franchise. We'll talk about NBA draft picks, which assets they actually have pre lottery. Of course, is when I'm recording this, we'll also talk about potential NBA draft targets for Sacramento, key players heading toward free agency guys that they'll look to retain NBA free agency in itself, cap space situation, potential targets. And then you have to look at the next season predictions as well, because again, that's really what matters. How well do they play next season? And I'm going to give my thoughts uh, and ideas for what needs to happen in Sacramento. So again, hopefully you guys do enjoy today's video. Let's go ahead and jump forward into the 2021-2022 season. And they finished with a record of 30 and 52, which was the fourth worst in the Western Conference. But remember, the West is highly competitive. 30 wins isn't terrible. But in all reality, it's not going to get the job done, right? A record of 30 and 52, not going to get you in the play-in. Uh, that's going to get you sitting at home on the couch early watching some playoff basketball. And I don't think Kings fans are very excited about that. This team has not made the playoffs for such a long time. It's been a really terrible drought. And I just hope Sacramento gets out of its own way uh, and can get to a point where they start winning because the end of the season here, you know, Kings fans had to deal with a lot of memes about Tyrese Halliburton in that trade. So let's get into a, one of the bright spots here, and that is Fox and the Ox, the actual combination between De'Aaron and DeMontis. I do think that's actually a pretty solid fit, and we did see De'Aaron Fox kind of leap bound back into the player that he was becoming and blossoming into before the Halliburton selection. And I think there became a little bit of confusion on the identity of this team. Now, for me, with De'Aaron Fox, I mean, He's a really good player. He is. And he's able to score the basketball. Very smooth. Now, the thing is, his jump shooting has really wavered from when he came into the NBA. So uh, I do think that for Fox, uh, he has to get better at shooting the basketball, specifically off the bounce. Um, and he just has to be a little bit more of a threat. But he's capable of, of filling up the scoreboard. Uh, so I do think that he's a nice player to have on your roster. For me, I probably would have opted to go with Halliburton simply because of the way that he facilitates the basketball. But De'Aaron Fox, I understand why they did what they did because they did bring in a two-time All-Star in DeMontis Sabonis, who is a really great player. Uh, he's one of the best players in the league. He's a top 25-ish player. Uh, and I think that he's got some really good assets to him. Uh, I think he gives them a consistent playmaker out of the high post. Uh, and there is a little bit of an issue with their structural identity around these two, which we're going to talk about more. Also, the next uh, bright spot from this season is that they did end up earning a high draft pick. They have the seventh best odds in the lottery uh, and a really good chance here to actually move up into the top four. And even if they don't say they're picking seven, there's some really good players there that I think can actually really help this team as early as year one of their NBA career. Davion Mitchell, another bright spot. I knew this kid was going to be really good defensively. I liked the selection when they made it. Um, you know, and I still had the idea that, hey, it's going to be the trio backcourt of Fox, Halliburton, and Mitchell. Even though it feels a little crowded, I thought it was going to be viable. Proved to be a little bit less viable, especially in year one. But Davion defensively, I think, is a real bright spot for this team. Uh, and I think he's starting to come around offensively as well, especially after the Halliburton trade. So it's going to take Davion a little bit of time to maybe acclimate to the NBA 
Remember, same thing happened at Baylor. Year one at Baylor didn't come in and, and be this great all-time player, uh, but by year two, started to become that for the Baylor Bears. So I think Davion Mitchell, once he acclimates to Sacramento, gets used to the NBA game speed, he will actually really improve his offensive game. Then Chemezi Metu, uh, a player here who probably a lot of people don't actually know, especially if you don't watch Kings basketball. He had a significant role increase this year under Elvin Gentry. Uh, and I think that he does, you know, probably play a big role into the team next year. Uh, you know, a lot of people love to give credit to Jared Vanderbilt, who's playing up from in Minnesota for the Timberwolves. Matt too plays in a similar role, you know, does a lot of his work off the baseline. And I think is really progressed as a player. Right? He offers pretty good size and length. And I think is a nice complimentary piece. Now, should he be a starter? Maybe not. Maybe he'll be better served coming off the bench. We'll talk about exactly how they fill out the rest of this roster. And then Harrison Barnes as well, another bright spot. He's just been very consistent for them, uh, which I think is good because he does hold his trade value well. So if they do ever decide that they want to trade him and try and maybe rework what they've got on this roster, I think Harrison Barnes is a pretty good candidate for that. So we'll talk about that here moving forward into some of those key decisions. First of all, they've got cap holds currently on Jeremy Lamb and Dante DiVincenzo. Those are estimated at nearly $16 million and just a hair over $14 million uh, for Lamb and DiVincenzo, uh, respectively. Lamb, I think very well they could let go. Uh, they might not. Say, they might say, hey, we don't really need to keep Jeremy Lamb. But given their cap space situation, they might try to keep a cap hold on him, maybe try and, uh, you know, fling a sign and trade for him. Uh, if he wants to go to a contender without cap space, I, there's different ways that they can go about Jeremy Lamb here. Ultimately, at the end of the day, though, I don't know if he makes the biggest deal for them. Uh, but Dante DiVincenzo, of course, they traded for him from Milwaukee. And already, reportedly, he's not happy about his minutes being cut near the end of the year. And he feels like he, you know, kind of got wronged in that, especially since he's headed toward free agency and he feels like they're trying to save a penny. I need a news flash here to DiVincenzo. You, you shot sub 40% from the field in your first year back from an injury. I think a lot of teams are already going to be kind of undercutting you in terms of pay anyway, Dante. So I don't think he should be mad at the Kings. Uh, you know, they were trying to, you know, position themselves maybe for a draft pick near the end of the year. I Now, I know I understand why DiVincenzo should have maybe gotten more minutes at the end of the year, but I think he's kind of making a big deal about nothing. Then we look at the Rashawn Holmes situation, and he's due about $11.2 million. So they re-signed him last offseason on a really good deal. But the issue now is with the Sabonis trade and their idea of, hey, we're going to play Sabonis at center. Rashawn Holmes kind of becomes available, I think. His minutes went way down, came out of the starting lineup. Now, the benefit to keeping him is, hey, you have a really good backup center and one of the best backup centers in the league, if not the best backup center in the league. But at the same time, for a team like Sacramento that does have some flaws, Rashawn Holmes bring him out into the marketplace and saying, hey, what can we really get for Rashawn if we do have a trade lined up? And I think it could bring you back some, some sub substantial pieces that could really help your organization and your team try and win some games. So I do think they have a little bit of a question to answer here with Rashawn. And then Harrison Martins as well. He's due 18.35. Maybe you go into the marketplace with him, try and rework this team uh, and see, hey, maybe it's possible that we do open up uh, certain ways to bring in more draft picks or we bring in another young player in a deal for Harrison Barnes. And we just try and retrofit this thing a little bit cleaner around De'Aaron Fox and Demontis Sabonis, which I do think needs to happen in some way. NBA draft picks, they have their own first round pick, which remember I said is the seventh most likely odds to end up first overall. Uh, which we do have an NBA Draft Lottery Explain video up on the channel. Go check it out. It does go into the whole NBA Draft Lottery, how it works, and also gives you the odds for the Sacramento Kings to actually have the first overall pick. Then we have their own second round pick as well in Sacramento. So two picks in the top 40. And then additionally, they have the Bulls second rounder, which gives them another pick to play with. Maybe they try and package their two second rounders together to move back up into round one. Or maybe they try and sell them out in a deal with, you know, a guy like Rashawn Holmes or Harrison Barnes to bring back something of value. Both are on the table, I think, and both are potential options. For the first round draft targets, and again, it's dependent on the lottery. Best case scenario, they're picking first overall and they draft Jabari Smith out of Auburn or Chet Holmgren out of Gonzaga. And you say, okay, we've got our guards of the future in Davion and De'Aaron. We've got our big man in DeMontis. Now we just need that four man. And we go out and get Jabari Smith or Chet Holmgren. Well, I think either of them can play really well at the four. Chet Holmgren's defensive versatility, I think would be a phenomenal pairing next to 
DeMontis Sabonis. I think Jabari Smith's offensive upside and shooting potential would also be a great fit offensively next to DeMontis Sabonis. So that's the best case scenario. Sacramento moves up, gets one of those two guys, uh, and you really see a massive jump for this team. Worst case scenario, they move down, which means two teams below them moved up. You could see them falling to maybe pick nine, potentially pick 10. That's very unlikely, but possible. And then when it comes to some realistic options here that the Sacramento Kings could consider, I have forward or guard, and this is around pick seven. So assuming they get the pick that they're kind of projected to have, they could look at a guy like Benedict Matherin, who can kind of play a hybrid two or three position in the NBA. He's a wing scorer. You put the ball in his hands. He's going to get downhill, get to the rim. He's got really good elevation on his jump shot. He's shot fairly well at Arizona this past year as a sophomore. And I think is a pretty good player. A.J. Griffin out of Duke, who's a really nice shooter. And again, for Sacramento, if you're trying to retrofit this thing around De'Aaron and DeMontis, I think you need shooting. So A.J. Griffin, a tantalizing forward prospect because of his size and, and wingspan and length. But if you're also looking at it from a skill standpoint, he brings something you badly need, which is jump shooting. Because in one deal, you sent out Tyrese Halliburton and Buddy Hill, who are probably the two best jump shooters on Sacramento. You traded both of them while bringing in DeMontis Bonus. I think you need to replenish some shooting. And A.J. Griffin does that plus more with his defensive capabilities. I think he's also going to be able to drive the basketball down the line. And then at the other position that they could consider is another power forward here. Keegan Murray. If they're not able to move up in the draft and get a guy like Jabari or Chet, Keegan Murray is someone who very well could go in the top five, but if he falls there to seven, does make a lot of sense as well because he's really good at rebounding the basketball, smart defender, brings help side when he needs to, and I think would be another good compliment next to DeMontis Sabonis. I think he kind of makes up for some of DeMontis' weak spots, and then I also think Sabonis' offensive strengths do play into Keegan Murray's game as well when he come, when it comes to working off the basketball uh, and just being in the right place to score. I do think that all of these players would be massive improvements into their starting lineup. Then we get to NBA free agency here. And you look at the cap space situation. The Kings are an estimated $22 million over the salary cap, which obviously doesn't give them a lot of room to breathe. And going into the offseason, you might say, well, if they're $22 million over the salary cap, how are they going to improve? Well, they can use the non-taxpayer mid-level exception, which is about $10.5 million per year. And they could either give that to one player. So you could sign one guy for, say, one year, $10.5 million, you know, two years, 21, whatever it is. Or you could break that up to multiple players. So you could say, hey, let's sign a guy to one year five and another guy to one year 5.5 million. And that would be how they could use their non-taxpayer mid-level exception. For me, I think they should opt to maybe spend more of it to try and bring in one quality free agent. Uh, and I think that uh, when you look at the needs for this team, it's all about defense and shooting. If you're going to have De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis on the floor, you need to have better defenders around them. Uh, De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis, probably not the best defenders at their position in the NBA. So, you know, every team in the league wants three and D wings and three and D forwards. I think the Kings are the team that probably needs them the most, just given where they're currently at on their roster. They need shooting. They need defensive capabilities. So here's some guys that I think make some sense. Robert Covington from the Clippers, probably the best option when it comes to Sacramento. They might have to use their full taxpayer mid-level exception to try and uh, non-taxpayer mid-level exception to try and bring him to Sacramento because I think the Clippers are going to be interested in keeping him. Uh, you know, Covington's been a little bit of a West Coast trip since getting traded to Portland. Uh, now went down to LA and we'll see if he goes to Sacramento. But I think he does make a lot of sense because he's a really good gap filler. He's going to be able to protect the rim behind Sabonis. Uh, and he just rotates well. So I think he knows defensively where to be. Now, I know everyone labels him a great 3 and D wing. His shooting's not as good as everyone thinks it is, but he's going to be able to knock down open jump shots. And when you're playing with Sabonis and Fox, if you can knock down open ones, you're probably a pretty valuable addition. Otto Porter Jr. here, not necessarily the defender that Covington is, but he's a better shooter, and I think he's more uh, willing to take tough shots. So if you're looking for someone who maybe gives you a little bit more offensive upside and a little bit more dangerousness out on the perimeter, Otto does make some sense for that. Now, again, I don't think he's going to solve some of the defensive issues, uh, but maybe you can get him at about $6 million and you try and use the other four, four and a half to bring in a defensive-minded player around Otto Porter Jr. And then the final fit here, Jeff Green from Denver. He does have a player option. He could opt into it with the Nuggets, so it's very possible he's not available. But if he is, I do think he makes some sense as well as a veteran to come in and, and kind of just help this team out a little bit. Now, I don't think he's going to be playing 30 minutes a night, but for 20 minutes to fill in behind Harrison Barnes or Chimezi Metu, 
I do think there is a lot of value there to that. So Jeff Green could be on the radar as well for Monty McNair in Sacramento. Moving into next season. So we took a look at the draft. We took a look at free agency in certain ways that they could improve. Let's say, you know, in free agency, they draft or the in free agency, they sign like a guy like Robert Covington. And then the draft, they end up drafting, you know, someone like Keegan Murray uh, or potentially, you know, someone like AJ Griffin. You're a lot better. You really are. Uh, your team's deeper. You have more reliable players. But realistically, for Sacramento, they need, need, need to make the play in. Otherwise, you could probably say goodbye to Monty McNair, which pains me because I do think he's a solid GM. I think he knows what he's doing. And I think that, unfortunately, ownership is putting a lot of pressure on him. And I think Kings fans know this better than anyone. Ownership just can't get out of their own way there in Sacramento and makes life really difficult for the GM, the head coach, which there's a whole head coach search going on right now because Alvin Gentry may be moving to the front office, uh, which is crazy. I didn't even talk about that as much in this video as maybe I should have. Uh, but I think, you know, with the Kings trying to find a better coach, if they can get one, you know, I think Mark Jackson does make a lot of sense for Sacramento. And I would love to see Mark Jackson coaching again in the NBA. They need to make the play-in. And if they don't, McNair's gone. The goal should be to make the playoffs, too. I mean, if you're trading for an all-star level player and you're giving up one of your best young pieces, I mean, the team should be looking at itself and saying, we need to be a playoff team. So... For that to happen, Sabonis and Fox are going to have to play at an all-star level, which, you know, I think Sabonis can. I'm not sure about Fox. It's going to be interesting to see if he gets back to that level without Halliburton there. Maybe Kings fans are really confident, confident that he can. So let me know in the comment section if you think he can. But I think there's a lot of pressure on Sacramento this next season. Kings fans, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy today's video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more NBA content. And also you can request more content for the Sacramento Kings. Go check out some of our NBA mock drafts. Go check out the NBA draft lottery video explained uh, and more. There's a lot of good stuff on the channel. So go check it out. Thanks again so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.